Karen is awake. In the distance, I hear my name. I see nurses arguing with people nearby. Forbidden visits. Only doctors, they claim. But wait a minute. They're my friends. They're all doctors. They're allowed to be here. I stare and observe and yet do not know. It was March 16, 2013, 2012. <laughs> I was now the patient in intensive care unit, no longer the physician. I began to realize something bad had happened to me when I saw my parents and younger sister coming by. I was living in Mexico City where I did my medical specialization in ear, nose, and throat, and a year of facial aesthetic fellowship. They were living in Nicaragua. Even my older sister, who lives in Spain, came. But it was not until I saw Arturo, a good friend, ex-boyfriend and surgeon, walking in with, it, with his uncle Joel, a well-known trauma surgeon, specialized in spinal cord injuries that I know is beyond bad. Hoyle was holding MRIs and I started explaining in detail what had happened. Eduardo, a neurosurgeon, was driving the car, speeding, spun out and drove off a highway and collided to a tree. I was in the front seat passenger. The seat belt saved my life. The impact was so tremendous that I broke my right um, collarbone, allowing the seat belt to slip and allowing me to come forward and do a torsion rotation that broke my spine and severely da damaged my spinal cord, resulting in paralysis from the waist down. I don't remember the accident. I don't remember the ambulance, paramedics going to a first hospital where I have an in, um, first surgery for controlling internal bleeding or vein transfers to the second hospital where I have surgery for my spine. I don't even remember my reaction to being paralyzed. After three weeks in Mexican hospitals, I was stable enough to travel and being transferred to Santa Clara Valley Medical Center where I had acute rehabilitation. I spent over a month learning and relearning the fact of my new condition in life, how to manage and how to move in a wheelchair, how to prepare myself to go out to the world, and finally to go home. But I didn't know where home was anymore. It was not Nicaragua, where I'm from. It was not Mexico, where I lived over six years. And it was not Spain, where I was preparing to continue my studies before my accident. During my time in acute rehabilitation, the, acute, the big question came up almost every day. God, what about my career? And my professional life, what? I am an MD, specialized in ear, nose, and throat, a surgeon. And however, here in California, I'm nothing without my license. I felt the doors I had opened with my medical education and specialization had closed. Should I get certified and practice in California? My father is a civil engineer and my older sister an architect and they kept telling me they will build an accessible clinic. But in Latin America, there's still a big stigma for people with disabilities. If I go back and practice there, who are gonna be my patients? Who will want me to do surgeries on them? 
Yet, my aspirations and the way I see life, my passion to serve through medical care have not faded. I still wanted to impact and make a difference in people's life. But now, how? During one of those never-ending life at rehab, I was remembering my community service year. It's an extra year after finishing medical school in Nicaragua required to graduate. It was an extraordinary year where I was placed by Nicaraguan Secretary of Health in Zambrano. It was a rural town 45 minutes away from um, Managua, the capital city. I was in charge of managing an abandoned clinic. Well, there was no infrastructure, sure, not electricity, not running water. I reopened the clinic. I was the only doctors and two nurses in charge of providing primary care to a town of 7,000 people. I had a mixed emotion, of course. Fear and anxiety, that was number one. I almost cried when I saw the place. <laughs> but I felt empowered and very enthusiastic. I typically saw 25 patients a day while managing all the medical supplies, prescription and referrals. I handled from colds and flus to pregnancy and some pediatrics. This experience impacted me very deeply, especially I was witness of my patients' difficulty and needs, the challenges they had. I talked to the major of the local and local authorities of the cities and asked to support. If they wanted, if they wanted a doctor there, I needed their help. They responded by agreeing to improve an infrastructure, including an upgrade for electricity, plumbing, and paint. By the end of the year, we met our goals in primary care, in infants, immunizations, family planning, information and resource, and health education, of course. At the conclusion of the year, I was recognized for the excellence in service by the town council and Managua Secretary of Health. The clinic continued to operate since that year that I reopened that clinic. Back to my rehabilitation. I realized that if I survived this terrible accident, well, that was the relief that caused away all my grief. In fact, a new vision in life emerged due to my new situation in life, paraplegic, a wheelchair user, a person with disability now, I realized that if this accident happened for, for a reason, it was to make a difference for something that mattered. So my life changed drastically and I'm not able to stand up, I'm sure able to stand out for others. Living through these experiences created within me a new determination and compassion to help others, others with disability like me, to advocate for them, to improve access and quality in the healthcare system. To me, public health, especially in the concentration I'm in, health policy and management, at UC Berkeley will help me fulfill my goal. California, it's one of the best places to live being in a wheelchair. So I also know where home is.